On this episode, I'm going to be showing you seven tips and tricks on electrical that you should know. So I highly suggest you stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So let's go to tip and trick number one that you should know. My very first tip and trick for you friends is have you ever looked into a receptacle or electrical outlet just like what you see here? And you ever notice on this ears right here, there's two little different size kind of like Mickey Mouse ears at the very end. And if you look into this loop right here, you see that it says strip number 12 wire and you see right here it says strip number 14 wire let's just say you don't have a wire stripper in hand is you can just use that strip gauge at the back and you can just insert that thing on the back right there circle all the way around like so it acts as a wire stripper you can just go and see that i just stripped it on there. It's a pretty cool built-in feature that these outlets have so when you get a chance go take a look at one of your outlets and take a look at these. I know the printing is super small you kind of need a magnifying glass but that's what they are made for. So that's a pretty good tip and trick to know especially if you're a beginner in electrical work. So tip and trick number two you might find this very very useful. Have you ever wondered what these little arches right there onto these outlets are? At first you might think that these are pretty much kind of like a stopper when you're putting in wire or something like that. Let's just say you don't have needle nose pliers or you don't have this wire stripper where you can make these shepherd hooks. I use these vault claws sometimes to make these little shepherd hooks and you don't have them to twist like this, like that. Well, the purpose of these is to help you make those shepherd hooks. So let's get a bare wire. Take a look at this, this is pretty amazing. You insert it through right there and it actually helps you make a shepherd's hook. Like so. That easy. So hit a thumbs up if you think that was pretty amazing. So, okay, next one. If you ever tried installing electrical switches, you always try to wonder, am I installing this upside down or right side up or is it backwards? I don't know. But anyways, the thing that you can tell if it's upside down is just make sure that the manufacturer label is reading just like that. So if you see that it's reading properly, like made in the USA, it's not upside down, then that's how pretty much how you do it. But another thing that's very, very good to know is that if you're accidentally put this upside down, the on label like I say, we'll say no, N-O. So if you see no, you're definitely installing upside down. So put it back up and there you have it. It'll be O-N. So no means no, on, correct. So friends, if you're finding this video super helpful so far, please kindly hit that like button so this video can be spread out and shared more to other people so they can be better helped on these tips and tricks on electrical. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So personally, this method I do not recommend. I know there's a lot of videos of there showing this method. I don't like it because it's just a knot. And after that knot is placed, they pretty much go like this and they go put a sleeve or a shrink wrap over it and that's it. The problem with this method is once electricity starts passing through here, it goes on a hot, cold, hot, cold. It repeats that process, hot, cold, hot, cold, and it, it becomes and expands and it contracts. And over time, this knot right here pretty much get loose and could possibly create an arc in there, could possibly start a fire. This is just not a reliable way to do it. There's a lot of videos going around showing this method. I don't recommend it. The one I do recommend is the Lineman Splice or the Western Union Splice, which I'll show you right now. Lineman Splice or the Western Union Splice is a lot more reliable and it's very easy. All you have to do is strip your stranded wire, just like so, and you're just gonna cross it like this. One goes clockwise, the other one goes counterclockwise, and you're just gonna feed it right through about three to four circles around. So that's one, two, three. And you're just gonna do the same thing on the other end. Given this is just an example, but if you are gonna do this on a closed um, wiring system, you are gonna put a sleeve first or a shrink wrap sleeve over there. And then you're just gonna close it off just like that. Okay, so just make sure that there is no frayed wires sticking out. Make sure everything is nice and closed off. 
And that's not it. What you, I highly suggest that you solder your connection. Soldering is the 100% proof to do it. I'm just gonna do a quick recap on how to solder. I'm not gonna do a detailed video here, so stay tuned for that video. And I'm gonna show you how to solder wire the detailed way, so stay tuned for that video. But in recap, you're gonna do this Western Union splice. And once that's done, you're gonna put flux over it. You're gonna solder with the 6040. And once that's done, we're gonna put the silicone paste over for waterproofing. Then you slide that sleeve and then we can go and shrink wrap that. But overall, that is the correct way to do it. That is the, the, the best and professional way to do it rather than using that, um, that hack where you go and do that tie knot and then you put that shrink wrap over. So this method is definitely the best way to go. If you have any questions on that, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll be glad and more happy to answer that question. But overall, that is another tip and trick that I want to show you friends. Another tip and trick, and I'm really excited to show you this, are using these Tycon solder and seal wire connectors. I'm not sponsored by any of these products I show in this video. I bought this, this with my own money. What it is, is it's all these connectors right here that comes in different sizes. Let me show you how this works. I opened up one of the wires so that the frays are wide open like that. Just a little bit, not too much because if you do it too much, then you won't fit it through the tube. Got one of these tubes for you. See the solder in the middle, and there's that tight tightening uh, ring on each end. Slide this through. Just make sure that all the strands go inside the tube, like that. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So notice how, notice how all the wires just kinda just connect right there, and you wanna meet those connections right in the middle just like that and it goes the wires are goes goes like this so now that the insulation passes the blue ring on both sides now we can use the heat gun and melt that solder to fully have a connection okay so it's like so so you're gonna start seeing it start shrinking it's pretty cool watching this just kind of hug the wire and you're gonna see the solder melt right before your eyes. You can see that silver solder is starting to go and spread right between all the crevices of the wiring. So there you have it. Now you have the sleeve fully surrounded, the insulation right there, nice and hugged. And now you have those rings right on each side wrapped around the insulation again for another waterproof connection like there. And notice how the solder inside just melted and embedded itself inside those wires, in between those wiring connections, just like that. And if you're unsure, then if you want an extra protection, you can actually roll on another shrink wrap sleeve to cover this whole thing. So you can have double insulation purposes, so you don't have this exposed. But this one's, I do this wiring all the time, and I'm pretty satisfied with this, but it's up to you if you wanna put another shrink wrap tubing over it, just to make it aesthetically pleasing. But overall, you can see that the connection is definitely connected right there. Make, make sure it's nice and cool. And the harder, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, really pulling on this with really, really hard and it's not coming apart. So again, friends, this is like my, my number one that I like doing. It's quick, easy. You don't have to take out the 6040 solder. You don't have to take out your soldering iron. All that equipment is just easy, plug and play, heat it up and it's connected. So again, this kit comes in all types of sizes for each one and how many quantities, and they're called Tycon. They're 150 pieces soldering and seal wire connectors. If you're interested on this, I'll leave the link on the description down below and all the other tools I use in this video, I'll leave the link on the description if you wanna go and try and try this out for yourselves. I know you're probably familiar with this. I do this all the time with my electrical. Instead of using wire nuts, which I'm not against, this is another method that you can do, connecting with wire nuts. But a faster way to do this is using Wago 221s. These are push in levers. These are fairly easy to use, very DIY friendly, highly recommend it. They're just levers that open up like that push this in, make sure it is connected at the back. It's all the way connected and seated all the way up. No wire showing, close the lever, and then do the same thing on the other end. Close it, and there you have it. You have a quick connection. Another alternative, rather than using wire nuts, each one of these have its own place. So 
again i'm not ruling which one is better than the other it's just yeah each one is your preferred but i highly like using the wago 221s they do come in different sizes two three even five so again if you're interested on in getting these i'll leave the link on the description down below not sponsored by wagos i just like to you know share this tip with you all right friends we're coming down to the home stretch now i want to show you my last final tips and tricks i know we struggle sometimes on trying to find wires that are clumped up inside of the j box electrical box and you just don't know where that wire or certain wires are running through your walls i got a solution for you and that's using wire tracers now this wire tracer right here is by client tools let me show you how to use it let's try to do your best to group up all the the wires to their respective cables you can see the sleeve where they're actually going to that's even perfect now you know where they're actually grouped up and that's half of the battle attach it to the bare wire okay so i'm just going to attach it right there and then attach it right there what you can do now is just turn on the device so once it says continuity and it's green then you're ready to go and it actually defaults to 800 hertz but you can scroll around there and pick one in whichever tone that you want but we're just going to stick with the default you can control the volume levels go and try out that light fixture first and see if that's the one that's that connected to so we do have a faint sound let me turn up the volume let's go test out this miscellaneous spot right here again still raspy to this one gang right there it's solid so if you look at the bottom of the probe there's a positive and a negative red clip always goes to the positive the red is connected to the white so the white has to go to the positive side of the probe black is connected to the black just to make it easier we're going to connect that to the negative port the, to the positive and then we're going to hook up the black to the negative you don't even have to turn on the probe this probe is actually off so there you have it friends those are the seven tips and tricks that i want to show you as of now i got more coming so stay tuned but let me know in the comment section down below which one you found super helpful which one you like which one have you tried and let me know also down below if you have any other tips and tricks that you want to share with the community down below kind of leave that in the comments and again if you're interested on in any products that i use within this video i'll leave the link on the description down below so check out those links so once again i'm jay from fix this house thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one